Hi folks, uh, good to be with you again. It's the last one for this week, it's Friday. Um, just been and had a haircut. I always feel that the barber's robbing me, it's just very simple. Give us a number two and or number three. And it's funny, there's this uh, barber I used to go to that they would give you a beer as well, which was always interesting and they'd play football. I mean, it was very male orientated, obviously. But uh, I've always wondered, you know, if I was doing something like a barber or whatever, and, you know, they always talk to you about things. You get to, do you talk about Christianity? I, when I used to go to a hairdresser, the, the hairdresser, she would talk to me about the church and everything. And it was great. We'd take a long time. Anyway, enough of that. Colossians chapter 1 and verse uh, 5 we've been on verse six rather we saw yesterday in the same way the gospel is bearing fruit and growing throughout the whole world now we, we talked about how the church is growing throughout the world and in some ways it's quite easy to believe that but it, today i want to think about this just as it's, it has been doing amongst you since the day you heard it and truly understood god's grace now that's a that's that's fascinating in so many ways see I remember in St. Peter's that at one time I said to the congregation, which was tiny at the time, I think at the time I said this, it may have been about 20, 25 people. We'd seen a little bit of growth. I mean, we'd gone from single figures. But I remember that um, there was this, I don't even know how to put it. There's just still this sense of defeatism. And I remember saying to people, I know that you believe that the gospel works and I know that you believed it worked in the first century and the 16th century and I know that you believe that it works today in China or Korea or perhaps even in the Pentecostal church down the road but do you actually believe that the gospel works here? And I think we are in a situation where many of us don't. We don't expect the church to grow. Now I think it is the normal thing for the church to grow. Now again we come back to the kind of um, I, I said almost heresy where I said that you, you, you cannot measure church growth just by the numbers, although the numbers do come into it. But data is not the primary means by which you measure church growth. You measure growth by how we grow in the fruit of the Spirit. That will have a knock-on impact as people are converted and as people grow in faith. But um, I just don't think we can commodify it and I don't think we should. But nonetheless, we should be expecting church growth. Robert Murray McShane argued at one point, I would sooner beg bread than want success. And I agree entirely with that. I long for people to come to know Christ and to be converted. I believe that just as the gospel is bearing fruit throughout the whole world, so I would expect it to bear fruit in the local congregation. Now, there will be times of leanness. There'll be times of judgment. There'll be times of discouragement. There'll be times of spiritual attack. But we should expect growth. And the key here is in this. Just as it's been doing among you since the day you heard it and truly understood God's grace. And I just ask you that question. Do you truly understand God's grace? And what does that mean? And how do we get it? Now, I think we'll consider that a bit more on Monday. But to truly understand, I think, if we truly understand God's grace, that causes the gospel to grow. And I'll tell you why. And I, I've used this illustration often, so please forgive me if, you, if you've heard it before. If I go to a really great football match, I'm so enthusiastic when I come out from it. I want to tell people. And if I go to church and I hear about God's grace and truly understand it, it should blow me away. It is the greatest thing in the world. And instinctively, that makes you want to tell other people. You don't have to be nagged into doing that. And evangelism almost becomes natural. So one of the best things for evangelism in and through a local church is just simply this that those who are already within that church get to understand and appreciate the gospel even more and understand God's grace even more. So how about this weekend? Pray that God would give you a fresh insight into his grace. And maybe on Monday, it'll make you want to share that gospel more. 
All right, uh, we shall leave you till then. You can join us for songs on Sunday. Uh, and I hope you have a great weekend. Uh, otherwise, see you again on Monday. Bye. Thank you.